All right. Hi, I'm Douglas McGregor, CEO for Our Country, Our Choice. We have with us uh, one of our uh, fan favorites, if you will, and that's Dane Wigington. And uh, he heads Geoengineering Watch. He's got some interesting comments today in connection with uh, the vicious hurricane, Helene, that has done so much damage to us. Welcome, Dane. Thank you for your continued attention to what's occurring in our skies, Colonel McGregor. This is nothing short of all-out weather warfare at this point. We can speculate about the agendas and objectives being carried out, but the fact that these storms are absolutely being manipulated and steered is inarguable. The denial of this fact is absolutely ludicrous at this point. We know the U.S. military and others around the globe, but U.S. military has been engaged in these operations since 1947, Project Cirrus. How far have they come since that point? So the, the cyclones are being kept weakened over water with manipulation of atmospheric pressure zones. And once they're near enough to the land-based network of frequency transmitters, the NEXRAD network, they are steered. And that steering is incredibly inarguable if we look at the animation of the frequency transmissions and their interaction with the storm, in this case, Hurricane Helene. We have it, we recorded that and that video, if we can roll that now, uh, the interaction is absolutely inarguable. Good. Result of natural processes and climate patterns, or was it manipulated? The circular blue flashes seen in this video are frequency transmissions from the NEXRAD network of transmitter installations. All available science evidence makes clear that atmospheric frequency transmissions can and do have a repelling effect on air masses, especially if and when the air masses have been seeded with electrically conductive nanoparticles. The brighter the blue flash from a frequency transmission installation, the more pronounced and powerful the repelling effect on any air mass or storm in the vicinity will be. Where there are no blue flashes, there is no transmission, thus no repelling effect, thus no resistance for a migrating storm. Translation, a migrating storm will be hindered from moving toward frequency transmissions and will easily migrate in a direction with no transmissions. So again, I ask, was Hurricane Helene's path and behavior just an act of nature, or was it engineered? You decide. Well, Dane, uh, yes. the, the question here is, how does this hurricane's path differ from others that we've seen? Uh, I've already had a lot of people call me from the Asheville area, talk specifically about the horrendous damage, and many of them pointed out that that is not Hurricane Alley, per se. It's not an area that normally attracts storms. Can you help us understand this? Well, the, the bottom line is it was directed there. As the transmission recordings clearly show, they kept it, that moisture corralled there to deluge in the same location. So, uh, again, these are patented technologies. And the fact that we have the entire so-called meteorological community denying that this is going on to protect their paychecks and pensions is absolutely criminal at this point. We know we have private defense contractors that are neck deep in the patents that manipulate these storms, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin. We know those two in, in particular do the weather modeling for the nation's weathermen, National Weather Service and NOAA. Again, both agencies have an, an illegal federal gag order on them. So at this point, this is an emperor has no clothes moment. It, it, that's, that's the best description I can I give for something that is so blatantly obvious and inarguable, can only be considered weather warfare at this point. And the fact that, again, the so-called science community is denying this manipulation is criminal. It's absolutely criminal, Colonel Gregor. Why do you think uh, the Asheville area in particular turned out to be a target? Does it have anything to do with the mining operations there for lithium or quartz? Is that just coincidental? I'm just curious. Again, people in Asheville are asking these questions. They're trying to find a rationale for why they ended up being in the in the middle of this well certainly it's hard to call anything a coincidence at this point isn't it i mean we have so many agendas and objectives being carried out with every action of the military industrial complex and the money printer bankers that fund them and control them ultimately and we have a, a cyclonic rotation like this that does that kind of decimation inland and yet we have in the record warm Gulf of Mexico, nothing develops, nothing spins or damages the oil infrastructure there. Why is that? We, we see those 
any rotation that comes anywhere near the oil infrastructure is immediately broken up. Yet we have this type of scenario happening inland. So again, once you interfere with the climate system, the entire system becomes derailed and we have a global network interfering with the system. We have documents at geoengineeringwatch.org, some hundreds of pages long, some nearly a thousand pages long, documenting the international cooperation in these programs, even between otherwise adversarial nations. So again, they will try to hide and deny these programs until the last possible hour, Colonel McGregor, because if the public realizes the entire weather system has been derailed and is being manipulated and no weather cataclysm can then be said to be natural, which means that you can't deny the, the connection of climate engineering for any event anywhere, the liability issue is incalculable. And so again, e even this one issue that just happened in the Carolinas, how could you possibly even calculate the liability issue there when hundreds of people are still missing? I believe 100 already officially declared dead, but hundreds still missing. If this issue is brought out into the open, the fur is going to fly, Colonel McGregor. If you can do so, uh, could you tell us about some of your recent discussions, conversations, briefings that you've had with political leaders from the states uh, in question that have asked you what you think? How, how did, how, first of all, what did they specifically ask you, if you can tell us, and how did they respond to your answers? Yes, Colonel McGregor, I had an hour conference call yesterday with the representatives and senators from the Carolinas, and we presented the data to them to answer their questions about how this manipulation occurs. They realized this was not a natural event. They're trying to digest the fact that their states were literally under assault from weather modification operations that are clearly connected with DOD operations. And we can speculate again on the agendas and objectives being carried out, but the fact that the storm was manipulated is absolutely inarguable. We know that technology to stop these rotations from even occurring has existed for decades with the manipulation of atmospheric pressure zones. HARP in Alaska is one example many people are familiar with. That's an ionosphere heater. That's a weapon of mass destruction, period. It can cause an electrical chain reaction in the ionosphere, which heats it to extraordinarily high temperatures, which causes the atmosphere to bulge up and down. The downward push creates a high pressure dome that can steer the jet stream. And the same type of manipulation can create low pressure zones. And when they have this type of power over the climate system, they can make or break these storms anytime they want. And again, what we, what we see now is storms kept weaker as they're over the ocean because they're harder to steer until they reach the land-based network of transmitters. And then we have Colonel McGregor, rapid intensification. You've heard that term probably a lot lately because that's, that's how they manipulate these storms. And again, we have Acapulco last October being the extreme example of rapid intensification, an insignificant low pressure system developed into the strongest Cat 5 hurricane to ever hit that part of the world in less than 24 hours, laid waste to, to Acapulco. And by the way, Hurricane John, which just hit Acapulco again as Hurricane Helene was wreaking havoc in the Carolinas, not many people know that. So Acapulco just got dealt another blow so again, how many agendas and objectives are being carried out when we know they can manipulate these storms and we know they can make or break them anytime they want? And, and again, I bring up the oil infrastructure in the Gulf of Mexico that seems to magically miss any sort of damaging storm again and again and again, while the storms wreak havoc inland and on shorelines. It's not a coincidence. They have that much sway over the storms. Yeah. But when you highlighted these anomalies, to the audience of uh, political leaders and representatives and so forth. How did they react? Did they react, uh, you know, with a, a degree of serious skepticism or did they take you seriously? They're in shock. They're in shock because when you realize that you're literally at war with those who control the federal government, how does one digest that? And when we go all the way back to, again, as I've referenced many times, even 1962, 62 years ago, Lyndon Johnson, President Johnson, then stating we had the power to control the world's cloud layer and he who controls the weather controls the world. We're seeing this happen all over the globe. We're seeing countries like Dubai, as you remember recently, got two years worth of rain, two years worth in six hours, right after they decide to ditch the dollar. 
Is that a coincidence? We see this kind of event over and over. So climate engineering is the crown jewel weapon of the military industrial complex because they can and are bringing populations to their knees without those populations ever even knowing they're under assault and they blame it on nature. That's why this is such a coveted weapon and they're not about to give it up, even though it's destroying the ozone layer, contaminating the entire planet. Every breath we take is contaminated with climate engineering fallout. Part of that is nanoplastics. Anyone who looks, I challenge your listeners to look, nanoplastic contamination, human organs. We know it's showing up in the brain, all of our organs. And we know there's decomposing plastics in the environment. We're not de denying that. But when you have this type of ubiquitous contamination of nanoplastics that appears to be a manufactured particle, uh, that's not just decomposing plastics. So again, this assault is not just environmental. It's it's a contamination of virtually the entire planet and all of us. Well, you <clears throat> you paint a very grim and frightening picture, and uh, I'm sure that's necessary to get people's attention. Now that you have people's attention and you're you're talking to an audience inside our country, our choice, but also this will eventually go out to others. What what do you want American citizens to do who are listening to you right now? What do you recommend that they do? I'm asking them to behave as if they're fighting for their lives because they are. And I can't take the long way around the barn with this. It's too, too many people want to pretend there's some happy ending if we just take a few meager steps in, in, in a particular direction or, or post something on a blog somewhere. We have to absolutely bring this issue out into the full light of day. That's the only chance we have of stopping it from the inside out so that those participating, and this is so very key, our military brothers and sisters and defense industry families and participants there so that they understand that they're participating in their own near-term demise. We have to push this issue out into the full light of day, Colonel McGregor. And, and this issue is connected to so many other lethal immediate threats. For example, the disintegrating ozone layer, and we are getting UVC on the surface now. That's the last spectrum of UV radiation before X-ray. Climate engineering is the core causal factor not just the sprayed particulates, which cause an oxidative effect on the ozone layer, disintegrating it, but the frequency transmissions that are being used, just like you saw with Hurricane Helene, all of this destroying the ozone layer. Now we're susceptible to a CME, a coronal mass ejection, because we don't have the atmospheric protection. Not only is it frying plants, foliage, insects, plankton, but we're susceptible to a, a large coronal mass ejection, which would shut down grid power around the globe, which would cause nuclear power plants to not be able to cool themselves and now we have Fukushima times 100 or 200. So from every conceivable direction, what's happening in our skies holds all of our futures in the near-term balance. Well, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines know from experience, it's one thing to ask questions and urge action, but it's another to put yourself at severe risk. And, and unfortunately for them, those of us in uniform right now, they're going to look at this and they're going to say, well, it makes sense to me. But what kind of uh, response am I going to elicit from the chain of command? And historically, the chain of command usually answers, shut up, get back to work. There's not a problem. If there is, we'll let you know. So what about the rest of us, those of us who are not in the active military? What do you want them to do? Can they write congressmen, contact congressmen, senators? How do you, how do you want them to go forward with this? Yes, to start spot fires of awareness. And we have tried to provide those tools at geoengineeringwatch.org. Our groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which includes two U.S. Air Force generals testifying that these programs are real and ongoing. Former Canadian Minister of Defense, former U.S. presidential cabinet members, former government scientists. That film is the, the best one-stop tool to introduce this issue. And that link can be emailed to all of the above, all that you just mentioned, elected officials, environmental groups, uh, farm groups, ag organizations, the list is endless, to start a spot fire of awareness. And in spite of draconian social media censorship, our film, The Dimming, is now over 25 million views. People are waking up to this. And, and again, our printed materials help as well. We pass those on, by the way, for less than our cost of producing and shipping. Our only goal, my only goal, is to see this nightmare in our skies exposed fully once and for all and brought to a halt so that the planet can respond on its own to the damage done and not continue to sink with this toxic straitjacket of climate engineering 
How many blue skies do you see, Colonel McGregor? Do you see anywhere you're at? Because we don't see any true blue skies here. At best, it's silvery white. Well, I uh, I see some blue skies occasionally, but uh, admittedly, lately we haven't had much. But that I, I attribute to the rain. Look, uh, this strikes me as an issue that should spread like wildfire on this new uh, platform, social media platform that we are we have been urging our members to join called Republic, because Republic is designed under no circumstances to be censored or canceled. In other words, it is a true free speech platform. And if you pay to be on it, then you're free to explore, to speak, to write, to display, whatever you think is important for your community. And this is the kind of thing that really needs to reach people at the lowest level in every community, because that's where the change has to come from. Those are the people that can hold people accountable that are either appointed or elected to office. So I hope people will do that, and uh, we'll make that information available to them after this video. And I hope that we get all of the material that you've been discussing on that platform. It's very important. Dane, thank you so much for being with us today. Continue to uh, have God's blessing in the work that you're doing and be successful in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel McGregor. And I, I stress to your listeners, your viewers, that there is no place to hide from what's taking place in our skies. Every breath we take, every bite of food, every drink of water, all of it is is absorbing the contamination from what they're doing in our skies and it's it's affecting the planet's ability to grow crops forest fisheries they're all collapsing many causal factors we've been bad stewards of the planet but there's nothing that compares with what they're doing intentionally in our skies so thank you and your staff and your platform for helping us to sound the alarm sure thanks again dane and that's yeah. it from our country our choice and you heard the man it's up to you no one is going to rescue us. We have to act. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.